Hello everyone. Good evening. This is a much expected conversation and I'm very excited uh, to be coming your way this evening to, you know, to discuss sexual and gender-based violence, justice, restoration, such an all-important topic. Um, and who better to have this conversation with uh, than one of the most revered uh, ministers of the gospel in Nigeria today, um, Pastor Mrs. Nike Adeyemi. Uh, she's also the founder of the Real Woman Foundation, and they've been doing incredible, incredible work uh, for women, for women who have been trafficked, for little babies, for children. It's truly an honor to be talking with her this evening. I can't wait for her to come on. Uh, in the meantime, hello, everyone. Um, Gather around, get your friends, get your enemies, get your sisters, your brothers, whoever. Um, I'm really, 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 really excited uh, to be leading this conversation this evening. Um, for those of you who don't know, I have my own, uh, you know, my own specific um, experiences with the cloth. My father is a bishop, so it's truly an honor uh, to be talking to her this evening. And I trust that we will do justice to this conversation. So while we wait for her to come on, a little about sexual and gender-based violence in Nigeria. As we know, there are a number of expressions of sexual and gender-based violence. A lot of people think that it just has to do with rape or it just has to do with, you know, domestic violence. But there are so many other expressions. You know, there's financial violence, uh, there's emotional violence, there's verbal abuse. Um, there's violence against widows. Uh, Nigeria currently has a number of protections against all forms of violence, and these include uh, the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, um, which was passed or adopted by the federal government in 2015. Unfortunately, uh, five years after, we've seen only 16 states adopt the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act. We also have the Child's Rights Act, which amongst other things, uh, prescribes you know, the age of 18 as the age of consent for, chill, you know, for people to be able to get married or for people to give consent uh, for sexual activity. Again, unfortunately, 17 years after this bill was first adopted um, in 2003. And so 17 years after, we haven't seen uh, the entirety of the country adopt this 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 act. There are eleven states that have currently not adopted it, and you know we continue to press, we continue to advocate, we continue to ask citizens to activate the office of the citizen and call on their you know elected representatives to do the right thing, to do the thing for which they were elected into office. So if you're watching this evening. Your first takeaway from this conversation is go and have a look at the maps. Has your state government passed the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act? Has your state government passed the Child's Rights Act? If they haven't, who are your legislators? Call them, Mo. Mm? It's a very serious conversation. Call them. Uh, reach out to them. It's an election issue. If people say they're going to represent you, they should truly represent you. I see my guest is here. I'm getting a little giddy. Good evening, Ma. Um, please just join the conversation. Um, yes, I can see she's here, Yemi. Thank you. Very, very, very excited. Oh my God, this is a Hello! I'm sorry, Hello, I said I was going to be <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm great, thank you. I said I was going to be a lot more composed. I'm sorry, I didn't even oh. know when that shriek came out. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you for having me and thank you for all you do. Good evening, everyone. Um, Good uh, evening, so Mars. Oh, you're so Mas, pretty. Like, I feel like I should just look at you and smile. I do too. Ah. Do nothing else. Ah, you too. I like the hair. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you. So we're really just going wow. to get into it. I know that um, this is a very important conversation, not just for you, but for everyone who's joining. Um, as we know, you know, there's been like an entire 
shadow pandemic of sexual and gender-based violence. And mm -hmm. as a child of a cleric, my father is a bishop and has been, you know, in, in religious circles for about 30 odd years. Um, I felt really honored when Yemi reached out to me and said, you know what, this is the conversation to have. And I feel like, I mean, I'm a young person living in Nigeria and we've seen all sorts of things happen that have made us question, you know, is the church really the place we go to for, for protection, you know, from external hmm. influences and aggressions and stuff like that. So when Yemi called me, I'm like, yes, girl, let's do this. Um, yes. But let's start with, with the Real Woman Foundation. Since 1999, it's not one of the newcomers around. Um, yeah. What did you intend to achieve with it? And over a decade after, right, yeah. more than a decade after, what is the thing that makes you most fulfilled about starting the Real Woman Foundation? Well, Chioma, once again, thanks for having me. Yes, when Yemi did mention, I was like, oh. Then she was like, oh, Chioma. She, she mentioned something in passing that you were, maybe that brought me over. It's not like I didn't want to do it, but I'm just so super. Yeah. My time is just, my schedule is just really crazy. I think then I had a soft spot for who my host will be, you know, even though I had not met you because I have a soft spot for pastor's kids. <laughs> Yeah. Just to know what you've gone through, the good, the bad, yeah. and the ugly. Okay, there's some good in it, but there's bad and ugly too. You've seen things, you know stuff. So again, it's nice to, to be on here with you. Well, the Real Woman um, Foundation was born out of um, just this longing to help um, girls out there on the streets. Honestly, I could say I almost really stumbled on it. But what happened was that I, at the time, I think 97 or so, yeah, 90, 96, 97, because I actually started in 99, but I began to feel for, feel bad for girls on the streets. I would just feel bad. I would just see them and feel bad for them and wonder, where are they selling their bodies? Where are they, you know, not from a religious point of view, but from a point of, they don't, they have parents, you know, at this yeah. time, I was a very young um newly married myself, you know, so maybe I was, I was still under 30. I was still under 30 because then got married at 26 and I was still on. So this was like maybe 27 years old. Yeah. 27, 28, thereabout. And um, I would feel like just going to talk to them, like stop it, you know, but it looked very weird to come down from the car and just go and start preaching to a prostitute or a girl by the side of the road, I knew that would not be wise. But as I thought more and more about them, somewhere along the line, I was talking, I was just sharing one day, and someone said, I know a brothel, you know, not too far from where our church was located at that time, which was, well, still the Oregon Andes, but it was somewhere called Coca Village, which right now is around Alausa, for those who know Lagos very well. And um, this time was maybe just a year old, and... I went into a particular brothel one sunny afternoon, just put on my jeans, went, I didn't want to hold any Bible. I just, you know, went in there, just hoping to strike a conversation with, with someone, you know, out of curiosity mm -hmm. and out of a longing to reach them. Mm -hmm. And I met one girl in the, you know, this face me, I face you again. If you're familiar with Lagos or you're familiar with Nigeria, you know what you call face me, I face you. Small rooms that open up into a long hallway, into a corridor. And at the end are the conveniences, very small rooms. And I stood in that hallway and then this girl just came out from nowhere. And I told her I was looking for my sister. That was a lie. But again, she was my potential sister. So the drama began. Oh, is she fair? Does she look like you? She taller than you. She didn't ask me what the name of my sister was, this imaginary sister. Mm -hmm. I wondered why, but fast forward to my working with them, years after I realized they don't use their real names. I mean, what's the point? Because obviously they would not want to use their real name so that they're not traceable. Anyway, when I saw that I could not keep up with the lie, <laughs> I couldn't go any further <laughs> with the description of someone that didn't exist, then I just you know, began to say, okay, you know what, there's really nobody in particular. I just wanted to come and first squeeze her face. But I said, look, you're beautiful. I said, toasting her, you know, like talking to her, like, what are you doing here and all that. You know, and eventually I had favor with her and she became my friend in that place and the rest is history. So I got into their world. I got into their world. You know what I discovered? I got into their mm -hmm. world. I discovered history of incest, 
her, her friends, you know, because I then began to meet her friends one by one. I didn't know that is what you call friendship evangelism. I didn't even call it evangelism. I just wanted to reach out because before that time, I had personal issues in my life as well, which I'm not going to details here. That's why I tell people that you can turn your pain to power. I had personal mm. issues. I had, I, I'll be very vulnerable to say it. And I had issues of loneliness in my young marriage. Yes. My husband knows because I'm free to share it because it's my story. I'm owning it. You're not a wicked mm. person. You didn't do me bad, but that was just, we're both young. Didn't know how to really do the married thing. Very different. So I found myself very lonely. Early on in marriage, just very lonely. And God turned my eyes outward. And that was it. And I also began to see what was in sync with my own gifting, which is compassion, which I would realize later on because I couldn't put a finger on what my gifting was. And I realized that that was God wanting me to turn my eyes to people who are hurting, to people who are the lower, you know, edge or a lower part of the society. Um, mm. Starting from girls like that who are broken, not just, okay, going to feed the poor and all that. Yes, I, I knew that I was grown up being kind and very, but the stories, I had her story and the story of her friends, which one after the other, sometimes I was just going, and I remember Christmas Day that year, I just went with drinks and a cooler of jollof rice. I had someone help me make, and I just dumped it for them. I said, just eat, keep my bottles, because then there was still these <laughs> bottles in the crates. Like, yeah, just keep my bottles. I'm not preaching. I'm not here to whatever. Bye-bye. I'm going to just enjoy Christmas Day. Yeah. You know, one after the other, and you then want to, oh, auntie, I need money for my hair. And I didn't have money. I, so I, I spent what I had until I just had this idea. Like, if I had a place, okay, that first girl, her name was Sandra, though it wasn't really, so if I had a place for you, I would ask them one after the other, will you leave? Will you, auntie, I'm ready. I'm ready. Because this place, if you don't leave, mm. you continue to do this. Some of them did give their lives to Christ, you know, and had to follow up, disciple them. And then the Lord gave me this idea to have a shelter, to have a place, which today, I mean, fast forward a few years after, because it took about three or four years afterwards for me to really get a shelter, which today is the Real Man Foundation in Magodo. We call it the Peace Villa. And then a few years after, we yeah. formed the orphanage, which is the orphanage. Three, yes, yes, which is called Love Home Orphanage, but we occupy three twin duplexes in, or in um, Magodo. So that was the history of the journey. And as I got into their honesty, Chama, I became, over the years, I left my, totally forgot about architecture because that's what I read to master's level. <laughs> I realized that I should have read studied social work. So I became <laughs> literally a social worker, Lagos State, I'm yeah. part of the member of the, you know, um, Association of Social Workers of Nigeria. You know, along with my staff, you have to have a social worker, you have to have a lawyer working with you to be approved in the setting up the Real Man Foundation. But I began to learn on the job. But in key, I came from a place of compassion. And I saw the abuse to girls. Boys too are abused, but yes. girls... I mean, there was one girl that spoke to me one day and said, uh, you know, her father's friend abused her over a period of time sexually. And um, but why didn't you report? She said, for so long, I couldn't even tell my mom. Why? He said, they won't believe. I mean, it's their word. She said, this is a man that... Their relationship, his relationship with my father is older than me. As in, when I was born, mm -hmm. I met him as my father's friend. <laughs> you know, as my father's friend, family friend, he will come so he could pass for an uncle. So I began to realize that children, young people, they, they, are, they, they feel they will not be believed. And many times we adults yeah. prove it because we'll be like, what are you saying? <laughs> she felt like her parents would not believe her. Because it would be like, I mean, this man that we've known for years, you this small thing. Stop. And of course, the man will deal with her too. Yeah. yeah. So it I mean, me there's a wild. story. Yeah. There's a story um, that was on social media in July about a woman whose two-year-old was raped. Mm. And this woman, you know, was clearly not as educated. Um, mm. But the thing that stood out for a lot of us was she was calling her two-year-old a prostitute. Mm. And... I looked at it and I said, this is a child doesn't, you know, probably doesn't have up to 10 words in her mouth, completely dependent on adults for sustenance, you know, for care, for everything. And she's been violated so horribly, so horrifically by an adult. But because of the stigma and because of the, you know, the purity we attach to womanhood, any 
you know, any deviation from that, somehow the victim is blamed. And, you know, what you said now about this girl being unable to speak up about her uncle just brought that to my mind. Because if a mother can accuse her two-year-old child of being a prostitute, how much more a teenager, you know, an adult, you know. Um, that, is, that is bizarre. It's yeah, bizarre. it is. So I realized that the but, family, we, we, we need to come so my coming into becoming a bit passionate about the family was not from a husband and wife, lovey-dovey. I remember back in those days was Pastor Bimbo that was like a mentor to me that I should quit singles and married. But I said, no, I'm coming from reformation. I'm for, I was introduced into brokenness by these people. I realized that, okay, I must be there for my kid. I think I then had just one uh, you know, child then and then we must hear them we must listen we must must, and it's the drivers is the family members is the the pastor so to speak um then we weren't hearing about pastors abusing anybody but because all those things were kept hush but why i I don't know I, i just think there's just so much injustice done to young people girls and boys because many we argue that it's not just the girls you feminists you're talking no it's girls <laughs> and boys so young people yeah. but it's more predominant for the girls because a two-year-old even a 10-year-old yes. an eight-year-old doesn't have breasts how, how, so when they say you what dress, are you looking for like, it's not about that it's not about mm-hmm. the dressing those who mm-hmm. have um um uh, what's it called a veil even in the middle east and all covered mm-hmm. up and, and and all of that you know you ask people who are muslims to some muslim girls if they will open up to you then many of them to that that will say they'll be raped to all covered yeah. up so yeah. is it a crime i mean the incident of barakat people? in ibadan she was covered up. She was wearing a full hijab and she was killed in her father's house. So sometimes the question about where did you go? What were you wearing? All of those types of questions. When you think about six month old babies who have been abused, um, what were they wearing? But you said something that I want to jump into. And I know that a lot of people who have joined today want to hear about that. Abuse in the church and how sometimes religion is an enabler right and we talk about things like you know the scripture says correct your brother in love you know don't you know deal with these things on the inside um and so there's a, you know there's statistics 28 percent of nigerian women have experienced some sort of abuse um survivors are, are quiet you just said that what is the intersection between church and the law as far as cases of sexual and gender-based violence are concerned especially where it concerns people in positions of authority in the church church and sexual and gender-based violence when we say church first of all i know when we say church we always mean pastors evangelist teachers and especially pastors because we have teachers we have evangelists we have prophets we have those of us that are freestyle ministers you know yes i'm a pastor's (laughs) wife but we many times think of the pastor because the pastor is the one in charge of you have the four walls of the church so he has a congregation. The evangelist, the teacher, or other five women, they come to speak there, or they go and do their crusades randomly all over the place. So a lot falls on the pastor because the pastor, pastor is seen as like the under shepherd. He's seen as the father figure of that congregation, seen as. And leaders, male and female, must um, have, they're not perfect, but they have to hold themselves to a high standard. And the Bible says it. If you desire the office of a bishop, which means a leader, be the husband of one wife. Don't be looking all over the place. You know? So again, leaders, um, when we say church, I always like to say, let's define it. Are we saying church as the body of Christ? You are the church. I am the church. Whoever um, calls themselves Christians, even if you're you're in the, um, how do we, you're in business fully, you are in the, I don't like to say secular, but you are um, on the mountain of, taking the mountain of economy, you're taking the mountain of education, Mm -hmm. all these Mm -hmm. mountains work together. I always beg to differ that. They say, okay, there's a mountain of religion, then economy, entertainment, and culture, and I like all those mountains. I like the mountain of creativity and entertainment as well. I do like it. It is not opposed to the job. What I always like to see, or how I like to see is that why did we create a mountain of religion separately? Shouldn't it be the church 
is in those mountains, is infiltrated, is um, represented in all those places. But if we're talking about church, church, okay, so that let me not deviate, we're talking about church, church, and you're talking about church leaders, spiritual leaders. Um, yes, it's unfortunate that we find these things going on. And um, mm -hmm. the, the, perfect, the victims keep quiet, just like the victims that we had talked about earlier on the two-year-old, the 15, the 16-year-old, the girls that I spoke with in the brothel in the, in the early days, um, which gave me the passion to go now set up something for them. And from that brothel, I visited one brothel or the other in Lagos. Big ones, Lagos, Surilera, Dragonara, that, that have real names. Now, what, 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 um, what, what makes, why do victims keep silent, young and old? Fear. It's fear. Fear of someone in authority. Young people, small people, if you know how young people think, a two-year-old, three-year-old, five-year-old, they think, they always think like, oh, adult, we are small. We have to validate young people. We have to teach our children to be bold from, an, from the onset. I was telling that young people, sometimes last year, or, you know, during, um, um, sometime last year, I was telling a youth church, and I went in there and I told them that I was sharing some things, but I suddenly said, you know what? The same Holy Spirit in you is the same Holy Spirit in me, is the same Holy Spirit in Pastor Stan. It's not a smaller Holy Spirit. Don't think because you're small, you have a small Holy Spirit. Same Holy Spirit. Your body may be smaller, okay? But it's the same Holy Spirit. And you are growing and you are maturing. So don't let anyone, it's even there, the Bible says, Timothy, don't let anyone look down on you. But you also be an example of the believer. So young people also need to hold pastors, older people to accountability in a, how do I put it? In a gracious way first. If it's, if it's now, <laughs> we're not saying go and fight and now be abusing your pastor. But in a gracious way, if the grace doesn't work, then you can begin to escalate it. Sir, you touched me on my breast. I, that is not acceptable, sir. <laughs> you can put complete with the sir. <laughs> that, yes, put the grace there. Put the grace because yeah. Paul said to Timothy, "You too, while being an example." So mm -hmm. the puppet churches keep quiet because the victims they feel ashamed. The they feel guilty. Sorry, the, the victims keep quiet because they already feel ashamed. They feel they won't be believed. They feel um they will think I made it up. Um, and if they do not believe me, then it's double problem. It's double tragedy. It's, it's, you know, and I don't think I can win in their court. So they just wait till they what grow older. What can the church do? What can the church do? So they wait till they grow older. Yes. When they grow older and they speak up, they say, it's too late. It's too late. Why did you talk yes. then? Uh -huh. Yes. You know, I think what the church should do, church leaders and the body of, you know, is for us not to, um, to live the word, to live the word. God loves justice. He never said, cover up all these things. He never said, bring pain. He said, be the healer. It's the, those who need healing. Jesus went to those who need healing. He said, it's the sick that need a physician, not those who are whole. People come to church for wholeness. They want to grow. And then you now further compound their problem. So the church needs to stop. And those of us that are seeing these things, we need to hold our men of God, women of God accountable. We need to yes. hold them accountable. Yes. We need to. We need to not be afraid of men. So it starts with the church and with church leaders. You know, church leaders too, male and female, okay? They grew up, they were once young too. What happened to them when they were young? What happened to them when they're young? I'm not making excuses. Well, they also abused and they didn't get over it. So you need to face, come face to face with your issue and tell yourself, you this thing, before you destroy me, I will destroy you. You need to come clean. You need to confess your faults one to another. Pastors can have accountability partners. If you're a pastor that has a weakness in that area, get a friend who may also be a pastor, maybe not a pastor, a more mature person. 
and tell him about this weakness. We're not saying, okay, come in front of the church and confess that, huh, I'm a pedophile. I'm a pedophile. No, we're not saying that. Have someone you can be accountable to. When you're tempted, text the person, call the person, he's going to talk sense into your head. If he needs to come and see you, if he needs to say, look, don't do it, block her number, you're already, you know, this girl, you're getting too close, you know, you're getting, they, it doesn't just happen overnight. That will tell me that you are willing to stop whatever weakness you have. Same thing with anger. Have someone who, you have the word of God, but have someone who can strengthen you. Um, and you're saying, look, I don't want to do this alone. If you have a spouse, let your spouse also support you and let you know. Leave your phone and let your spouse be able to see that. Say, huh, what's this? Huh? You're already going there. Mm, you know that is not. So we're not asking pastors to be perfect. But let's we're know that them have to be accountable. someone that can speak to you so that you prevent being a pain. You prevent repeating the pain that was done to you if that is the reason why you are you know, raping girls or doing these kind of things or even raping guys because you have men too who rape boys. We knew there yeah. was a time scandal broke out in the Catholic church, which it came out that that was, had been going on, you know? And uh, I used to say, if I was, I was still, you know, single, marry, mm -hmm. have your own. And if you have your own spouse or your own wife, why is that not enough for you you know, so it's a weakness. And some people, when they are caught, they will say, hey, it's the devil. No, it was you. So we have to have a con. We have to keep having the conversation and not shy away from yes. it. So that yes. those who have been hurt, those who have been raped or sexually abused will be able to speak up. They will be able to talk. Um, even if they don't want to name who did whatever to them many years ago, but they will be able to talk and we'll be able to see that it's a real pandemic because there has been a yeah. pandemic of this thing, even before this pandemic lockdown yeah. that we're going yeah. through or that we're yeah. just coming out of. There has been a, an epidemic of cruelty, of, of evil, of, of, of injustice. And so we need yeah. to get justice and there has to be plenty of love and validation. The church should be a healing place. It should be a place of love. And so I'm calling and, and, on pastors and leaders to please, no matter what your message is, whether leadership, whether evangelism, or whether even business, some pastors are business, mm. and that's their strong message. Please, let, let love, let, let's begin to heal the world, beginning from our own home and our own congregation. That's an excellent place to leave it. Um, you, you talked about restoration and justice. Um, rape, for instance, is a crime against the state. And so when, for instance, anybody commits the crime, uh, there's often the, you know, there's the intersection between religion and the law. And we want to pray for this person and we want them to, you know, ask God for forgiveness and we want them to maybe step down from the altar for a little while to seek, you know, um, the healing that they, that they need. But there's also a place for justice where when a crime has been committed, whoever it is, you know, leader of the congregation, member of the congregation, there are repercussions and there are consequences because these things are put in place by society uh, as a deterrent, you know, against further... Uh, abuse or violence and so how do we reduce the conflict between the two you know they sometimes people say they want to counsel that they, they want to mediate they want to settle and things like that how do we reduce the conflict between you know religion and the law for the ultimate protection and restoration of the flock mm. well true um, I agree with you because there's a reason why um, we have the law, we have the courts, and we must let the law um, um, really, really take its, do its work. Um, mm. Especially if, because if a thief is caught, they have mm. to face the... <laughs> Even the Bible to, says they'll pay seven times. They'll pay seven times. And, um, yeah, and... Um, is there are there things in, in the Bible that refer to that? And I know that there's also the place of forgiveness, which, yes. yes, that has to come from the, it has to come from the victim. You cannot force the victim to forcefully forgive. And if the victim forgives, 
um, like you said, there's a place of law, especially if it's been handed to the court, if it's been law handed into yes. the but then they have to, you know, they have to do their work. Unfortunately, they yeah, have to sure. do their work, you know. But on the part of the victim, you cannot force the victim to, because of, you see, I think the fear of maybe a man of God, a woman of God going to jail, ah, no, because then the victim is suppressed. So we find situations like that. But I would say that that is not the solution. First of all, because yeah. in law too, there's arbitration. There is... Um, mm -hmm. For other mediation things outside of this mediation, there's settling out of court for um, other issues that is not rape. So there's mm -hmm. the possibility of that. But I would not agree that you lie and hush hush and paint the victim as a liar, and so that victims cannot speak up because you know that a man of God can never go to jail. And the aim is not for a man or a woman of God to go to jail, but there is really a place of uh, mediation where you can settle out of court. And I'm not saying that that should be the way out. It should not be a forced thing. It should not be a forced mm -hmm. thing. But for any man of God that finds himself there or any woman of God, um, whoever has been put over them, um, yes, apart from even the government and going to court and everything, there still should be to see with the congregation and in the body that there has been a remorse. There has been some form of punishment. There's been some form of stepping down. There's been some form of something that shows the victim and everybody else that, look, yeah, um, this is still some form of justice. Um, there's soberness and there is, um, val there is um, um, assurance that it won't happen again. Because what do we want? We do not want a repeat. Why do people go to jail and cool off? You don't want a repeat. So he said, go to jail. But some people get calm more hard down. In some people get more yes. calm down. They get more hard in the jail. Some people get more hard in the jail. They come out and they are worse. But that is the yes. essence of prison. Reformation. Mm -hmm. So again, it's another whole thing to look into what the Nigerian prisons are like or the prisons everywhere else because there are all kinds of things going on there as well. But really, mm -hmm. we should let the law, you know, um, do its work. But yeah. again, the Nigerian... Thing. we can't there's just too many issues going on with nigeria because the people who should also at the courts of the law the government who should also depend who are the government just like we say who are the churches all of us who are the government it's all of us but we have leaders mm -hmm. who will say mm -hmm. no this is the way to go um what if those leaders too are guilty of um child molestation child abuse mm -hmm. marrying on the that's a whole person, other conversation who are 12 years old that's a whole real, other conversation mama. Them, that's a whole other conversation things like that what if they also feel that um it's a good thing if a man desires you and rapes you what if they have that mentality that you know it's i mean what if they have that mentality as well that we, we, God created women fine and there must be a purpose. If not, why are they so fine like that? There must be, you know, what, what if there are all those narratives going on? The things you think about, you just feel like running. You want to run away from the surface of the earth, right? You just want to yeah. run. Yeah. And you run yeah. here, there's some kind of injustice going on. And But I like what you're doing because everyone has to take the matter that they want to stay with and pursue because they're yes. just yeah. too many too many, too many. You want to begin yes. to talk about Black Lives Matter. You care about Black Lives Matter. I know, but you're thinking, yes. mm, yeah. before I even go into that, let me deal yes. with these ones. We're already Black. Yes. The one that is going yes. on among yes. us, you know, so yes. huge, humongous, humongous problem. When I got into all of this, I, I think found that slavery, slavery was going on. Selling, so trafficking, not only prostitution, but then there was trafficking going on. Mm -hmm from state to state within Nigeria and across borders. And I began to see, wow, you know, as far back as 1999 and 2000, I think it was 2002, I went for a conference in 2003 in the UK and it was about trafficking, trafficking, mm -hmm. prostitution and trafficking. And I saw that it was a worldwide problem. How do we, but again, back to what you're saying, because the topic of today is how the church comes in, how religion, yeah. I don't like using the word religion, but again, we use it. So when we say you're in relationship, I'm so let me, a I mean, relationship. Let me is, flip. <laughs> let me flip this question a little bit, um, and just to you know affirm what you were saying. One of my favorite scriptures is Paul planted, Apollos watered. You know, God gave the victory, the and so we have organizations like you know, God gave the increase. Yeah, um, 
um, the, 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 the organizations like Enough is Enough Nigeria that are convening conversations, um, talking to, you know, Christian religious leaders, talking, talking to, you know, Islamic um, leaders, talking to government, et cetera, because we must have these conversations. There are movements like the State of Emergency um, on, on gender-based violence um, yes. that are, you know, leading advocacy and getting citizens to remember their power um, and the, the, the office of the citizen, which is the highest office in the land, and getting them yes. to hold their leaders accountable. Um, there are organizations like Dorothy and Jemanza Foundation that are going out every night, first responders in the sun, in the rain, to yes. extricate, literally extricate or extract women from very, very difficult positions, even during the lockdown. Yes. And then you have a situation where the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, um, which was passed in 2015, we still have 20 states in Nigeria that haven't adopted it. Adopted we have it. the Child Rights Act, um, where 17 years after, we have 11 states across the arc of the North who okay. have not adopted this act. And so my question to you is, how can religious leaders help? Because if you look at VAP, you know, the, the non-compliance cuts across, you know, north, south, east, west. It's not a northern problem. So how can religious leaders help, um, especially in a country with very heavy religious influences? Yeah. What are organizations like yours um, doing to apply the pressure that we need to get these bills passed in the state? So religious, thank you. Religious leaders need to um, get behind many of these NGOs because and speak out and support and you know from time to time mention this because the the citizens especially nigeria they don't know their rights the average yes. person does not even know their rights you're saying the office of the city is the highest whatever do people even know that because if you voted people into power you have the right to ask them questions you have the right uh, to demand accountability and thank God for the use of social media. It's there, hopefully, eventually, where we yeah. must, uh, where we can do advocacy even through social media. Advocacy, pastors can do advocacy. It's not until you go and, you know, carry one. Advocacy is not just sounding like a big word, but it is just advocating. That is what it is. It is even adding your voice and getting behind those who are really pushing these things so that they can go further. They can go further. Ministers of God, pastors can look, for example, within their congregation, call for those who run NGOs, those who, you know, if you're doing anything along gender-based violence, you know, and all of that, um, show up. Um, yeah. Um, put down your name and your email or whatever online, send it to us. Let's have a conversation. Let's see how we can support the work you're doing. Because they can't do all directly. Because each minister, each pastor has their own bent. Okay, each person has their own bent. But there are people, and that is the beauty of the church. There are people. So you are not a pastor, but you are part of the church in Nigeria, part of the church worldwide because you're a Christian. But you are doing this thing. So you should have the support of your pastor. You should have the support of your elders or whoever around you that you know, or have a week. A week is not enough. But again, you can have week of Spread it out justice. over a period of time. Week yeah. of justice. How many of us preach about mm -hmm. justice? We have prosperity mm -hmm. week. And nothing wrong in prosperity. <laughs> Amen. We need money to push all these things. <laughs> we have um, week. We can say holiness week. week. Sometimes holiness week. The week of yeah. praise. High praise. Praise. Thanksgiving week. Ah. You know, put on your dancing shoes. I love that too because I love to dance. I love to praise God because when I wake up and I see that I'm still breathing, I say, I didn't care. Yes. Yeah. Oh, praise. Yes. Even if I went to bed sad, I don't always wake up with a spring in my stairs. But sometimes when I think about it, I woke up. Hey, Father, thank you. So again, yeah. we thank God. We, um, what other week? Sometimes uh, children's week. Children's Day, Children's mm -hmm. Month, Women's Day, Mother's Day. Uh, yes, International Women's Day. That's one day the whole, uh, we hear everybody's voice, uh, 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 women, our mothers. Are that. After that, we don't hear again. Although Silence. They accuse, us of, yeah. they accuse us of having three days in the year. The Mother's Day, the UK, the one in, uh, in the US. America. Nigeria, with the, then the, you say, how many do you want to have? You say, it's every day, <laughs> you know? So if uh, pastors should have this mindset, it's not cheesy at all. And we're not saying that every day you have to be, but just sometimes give visibility. Sometimes mm -hmm. give visibility. Mm -hmm. Maybe even on a Sunday you have, 
two five minutes to spare or it's okay this one is just going to be dedicated we have three people in our church or you know maybe from our local assembly or maybe someone else from out there or we have the eie people um today that they are really um um advocating um for you know justice sexual violence they want eradication of what we need to hey and you give them the microphone tell us what you do you know and just let them speak and tell people to sign up with them, follow up, and they would have right there and then educated people of their own right. There will be a lot yeah. of mileage. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. There will be a lot of mileage because a lot of people gather um, in churches, small churches, big churches. There will be a lot of mileage. Mm -hmm. And now that even many churches are now online, some are resuming in you person. You have an opportunity. So this can also mm -hmm. be done online as well. This can also be done online. So again, I would just encourage ministers, pastors to do as much as you can. We're not saying you should do it, but give the opportunity to so have the passion to speak. Just just give them your microphone for it. Okay, so I'm giving you 10 minutes, 10 minutes, they hop on here and, 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 and say something. And the whole world That's will be watching, excellent. even online right now. We don't have to resume in person. The whole world will see it. Yes. The followers will see it and they will be educated in this. The states that have not yet ratified those laws, what is the delay about? What is the delay about? Many times it's the mindset of the leaders. When you look at someone like Mrs. Um, Bisi Fayemi of Ekiti State, she has always been someone who um, was, um, would stand for these things, would stand for the full gender, would, um, yeah, she did studies in it, has some degree in it, but that is not the only reason. Well, maybe that's why she went to study. But She's using that platform now, having become a governor's wife. She's using that platform. So states like that, they have passed bills like that. They have, I mean, from since... They're that, leading. Not, they're, they're actually they're leading, leading those conversations. So, so that's it. They don't have patience. You see, so it's, it's, how do I put it? It's your tolerance level, you see? So many times, these things boil down to who is in power, who... Who is at the helm of affairs? Jeremiah, let's really be honest. Yes. These things that's really true. And I think boil down to the personality of the leader and the people around. But we're just asking leaders. I think you don't know much, but surround yourself with those who will say, okay, what are the okay, what's on the front burner now? What are the things we need to address? There are tons of people in the comments just echoing what you've been saying. Um, I can see Bookie Williams saying, give a platform, which is what you were saying. Um, Yemiya Damalekun said, pastors can give visibility. <laughs> I can see a Titi saying, it's only International Women's Day that they talk about women's issues. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, I can see someone else saying, pastors can do advocacy. Religious leaders need to get behind these NGOs and speak up. Um, people are saying that you're glowing, which is nice. Thank um, you. <laughs> there's so many other comments around just, you know, don't just um, speak picking up on when it's karma. Well, let's not go there. I don't want to talk about karma. I, I no, that's, I a, that's a whole other no, conversation. That's a whole, that's a that's whole other my, conversation. You know I'm not, I'm not, I didn't want to go yeah. into that, but it just came into my head. Yeah. Like, because yes. they're passionate about that. You want to come and tell me how to lead my church, train my trustees, and say we can't go to court, you know? Please don't even judge them on that. And I'm not, I don't want us to talk mm -hmm. about the division, whether I have pastors blowing hot. Do they have something to cover? Mm -hmm. No. Many times it's not that they have something, but that's up their terrain. That's up mm -hmm. their terrain. They prayerfully chose their trustees and you're saying that, hey, can now come and just uproot your trustee. Well, I don't want to go deep in there, but I'm just using that as an example. Yes. That you see, it's yes. what you're passionate about. It's what mm -hmm. you're passionate about that you will fight for. I've always I'm just going to about injustice. I have always been yes. I didn't know. My mom would say when she's beating my, my younger brothers, <laughs> I may be the one that reported them. Okay, my 13-year-old me might report my eight-year-old brother or my 12-year-old brother that they did this, they did this. Okay, I'm the firstborn. And then the next moment she calls them, she brings out the king. And then I'm now holding her hand. She said, Are you not the one that reported? You are now Let me beat them all like me no. And I'm crying and I'm bawling. I'm like, God yeah. told me to report. I reported because what they were doing was not right. Okay, you turned the whole but house at the upside same down. Time, but I didn't expect there's a compassion them. thing. And now my yeah. heart cannot that is it. That's why I can be very I'm going to hard read through and mm -hmm. I can be very soft. I can be very hard mm -hmm. and I can be very soft. I can be soft if you don't know anything. If you're a baby in Christ, you've just come into Christ. You've just, you know, you're a prostitute on the street. I can be very soft with you. I won't say, give me 10 scriptures. 
But again, you've been a Christian for 10 years. If you're a leader, in the, I'll be hard on you. I will be hard yeah. on you. You see, so... So I promised our audience that they should yeah. send in questions and comments and okay. we're going to take them. I have one last question for you, but I want to see how much of the questions and comments I can run through. So yes. there's one that says, church leaders must take full responsibility for their excesses when found guilty, else we make a mockery of the sacredness of our faith. Um, leadership is by example. Um, someone else says, um, when Judas betrayed, a disciple of Jesus betrayed Jesus, he faced the consequences. Someone else says, thank you for this live. So a lot of people are saying, God bless you. People are saying confidence is your forte. Um, let me just see. There's a, I, I know that I saw a few questions, but there's so many people leading, um, you know, dropping comments and stuff like that. So I'm just trying to find at least one question um, for you to take. And then I will ask you the last question that I have. Yes. Um, there was one about what the church can do to comfort people. And I mm -hmm. think that falls, you know, within what we've talked about mm -hmm. and falls within, you know, your remit, which is really about, you know, restoration of these people. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this question was about um, what the church can do to someone or the church, uh, what the church can do to comfort someone that the church leadership has hurt. Um, so maybe if you want to take that question and then we'll take my last one because we're slowly um, yeah. um, coming to the top okay, of the on hour. on my side now, I don't know because I can see comments on my side. I'm not sure if they're the same as yours. Uh, they are the same, see, yeah. Uh, Busola Dakolo, hi. Thanks for jumping on. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I can see oh, quite a number of people also. Someone is asking about what you wear, where they can find your clothes. Uh. <laughs> me anyway uh, my people know if you ask my PA her name is Hannah she say anything she finds she wears I'm not very uh, how do I put it it's it's a chore for me sometimes to um get so when the, we could still go out physically to shops yes I would just go once and say okay let me look for things that are nice and try to buy mm -hmm. not all the time but buy and keep so that when there's a um, I have an Indeed. outing to speak. I just speak it because I hate to be stressed mm. by that when I should be studying, preparing my message. You know, I hate to, or if I'm just, um, I could shop for therapy sometimes, just looking through, and I just find someone at ah, something. This is nice. Ah, this will be good. This top will be nice. I like tops a lot. On because something tops, else. You can just tops. You can just yeah. be changing tops, and nobody knows what's at yeah. the bottom. So, Again, I don't stress too much about um, that. I just want to look neat and um, decent. But I'm not your very over the top because I many times don't have the time. But I think at the end of the day, oh, there's, there's this question well that's me. come in. And I have um, a what is the best Maybe it's way? Not good for fashionistas. This top that I'm wearing, I have it in black because the day I saw it, there was a black, so I bought the two. If they had in five colors. I buy all the five. You'd have bought all five. Once I There's try a question it, it from nice and it sits well, I will buy all the five. Yeah. I don't care. Somebody said that. Ah, isn't that the same church? The yes. same thing. It's easy. It's easy. Yeah. Doesn't Steve Jobs? Uh, no. The who do we? Who are we familiar with? Is yeah. Mark Zuckerberg. Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, they wear the same T-shirt, same jeans. The yeah. Same Mark Zuckerberg. The same T-shirt, gray and green. I don't even know if he wears any other. So, and then pandemic now has even come to make it easier for us. So, that's it. So, so two, two so big the comments. There's one from Osai. Osai says there's a moral ah, authority Osai. for church leaders to hold accountability um, within and not only outside. Now is the time to stand with victims. But to add to the question I'd asked before, yeah. Buki says, what's the best way for the church to support this current push for access to services and justice. So if you can take that with a question I'd asked about the church restoring someone okay. who had been hurt by the church, and then we'll take my last question. Okay. The, best, the push for um, access to justice. Services. The mm -hmm. uh, services and justice, right? That is the mm. services that the victims should, um, should, um, should get, right? Mm -hmm. So the church needs to, some churches will set up their own um, how do I put it? And that would be amazing to set up their own, um, how do I put it, um, team of, um, team of even lawyers, legal department, yeah? Legal department, in this time we have a department called legal aid, where people can, there are lawyers that are help people free, pro bono, you don't have to pay, they listen to your case. So churches can set up that. Churches can encourage, you have 
a pastor or a leader in charge of social justice. I have not seen social justice department yet in any church. Maybe there is. I know there's benevolence department, like we have that in this time, giving food to those who need um, welfare department, counseling department, which is very important, prayer department. But how about social justice department so that they can begin to push? They can begin to mm -hmm. tell people that, you know what, this is how to file a case in court. Okay, I'll go with you. Or we'll get someone to go with you. Because people, many times, they're afraid of even, it looks so huge, all this court yeah. thing. Well, let me just keep quiet. The church needs to support, needs to have a body language of support, a bodily position. I'm not saying faking it, but start from there that we can see that ah, you are even ready to support, not cover up, mm -hmm. so that people mm -hmm. can open up and people can speak and they can be encouraged that, you know, you will act on it and not um, turn it around on their head. So there has to be that direct line. And our churches are full of those who are lawyers. Yemi is a lawyer. Well, Yemi, did you study law or not? I don't even, I always forget. I always think she studied law. EIE. But again, because she's a passionate person, she is someone who is close to a lot of church leaders. And she's not a pastor, but she's someone you can call. She has been in a situation whereby she's like, you know, close to a particular pastor. But there's also this thing she's fighting. Yeah. justice and all that and it looks like it's opposing the church which side do you have to take you have to take the side of justice because yeah. if you do not those broken human beings may never be mended they may never be mended and the cycle goes on when do we break the cycle so i believe that we are to work together the church the government the courts we are all to work together those um, mountains are not separate mountains. They are all, they all, all have intersection. The intersection of healing. People in the economy mountain yeah. tell us how to do business, tell us how to have money. This is how you set up an account. This is how you do business. This is how to trade in stocks and all of that. It's to bring healing to our finances and to help us mm -hmm. to be responsible. So what, what is worldly about that? You know, so again, many Christians you know, study law, and it's for things like this. You're a Christian, you study law, you say, yes, it's for the world, and it's for the church, it's for the advancement of the mm -hmm. kingdom, and for the advancement of, of, of people, of lives. Of course, I know that there are various areas of law anyway, so some people can't even stand to bear um, all that is going on. So the second question is, that's where my own strength is. Even though my mom used to say you should have read law, she was begging me to study law. I went to study architecture. The architecture, I'm not practicing today. You're not, not using houses. it again. I'm not building houses anymore. I'm building lives. But it's okay. All the seven, yeah. eight years, he gave me an eye for details. So, mm. compassion. The church is a healing place. It is a, a place of healing. And so... Every church needs to have that mindset that it should be a safe place. It should yeah. be a safe place. Uh, for many, it's not been a safe place. For some, uh, it's not been safe, but it needs to be a safe place. I want to um, 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 implore every church leader and those who also have that grace of compassion. And we all should have it to reach mm -hmm. out and talk I remember doing Nigeria last year about that June when there was that major shaking. I don't want to mention names here, but there was a major shaking um, with this um, a pastor having said to have raped someone, you know, many years ago. Great people. People, people. people. yeah. So, people, so mommy, this person people. came mm -hmm. out to tell her story. But the, the yes. issue that people were like was, how can you come 20 years after? Or how many years after to tell you? So you didn't say then. It's still that thing of being young. How would you be believed naive? Then the, the, the narrative was that um, she came out because she was seeing this thing still being done, still being yeah. done, still happening by that pastor, still happening by other pastors too. It was getting to her. She was in touch with few girls who would probably come to her, you know, and say, I was, and then in her mind, she knows that she's still hiding this thing. 
doesn't have the heart to say, me too, it happened to me. Mm. Because that girl will say, and you didn't do anything, you're keeping quiet. Which means that you're also telling her, keep quiet. So yeah. she felt she had to come out to be the face of this thing. And of course, suffered for it. But it was not just because she just woke up and said, 20 years ago, I did this. I'm not going to show him because he's now, no. Um, because this person- I believe that the beautiful her thing her about her voice- heart, But I had yes. that many girls, yeah. how, if I'm hardly healed from this thing 20 years after. How much more? How much, the, when, when do we want to, do you know? And I would say that, well, the statistics don't show yet, but between that time last year and now, because she probably didn't know, people didn't know it would become a big thing. It rocked the church, it rocked Nigeria, it rocked, it was what you call table shaking and everything. Mm -hmm. But the lesson there is that people can speak up. People can oh, yes. judge. People oh, can, yes. you know, and all of that. And of course, yes, they went to court, the court came in and everything. Let's not even talk about whether we felt it was fair, the judge was well. The fact was that there was a lot of things thrown up. People could speak up. Even I, you know, <laughs> spoke to some people as well. I had to comfort. I had to speak to um, someone say, look, speak to this person. I need you to speak to this person to say her story. There was someone that they told me to speak to to say her story, but she insisted she would not say her story. She wouldn't say her story because the person in question, her sister who had died uh, in the process of all of that, she said, she's dead. So people said, tell her What's to speak up yeah. on behalf of her. She said, she's not alive. If she was alive. Then when yeah. you say, speak up. She said, she contacted her mom. Her mom said, no. Don't speak. So it's not that they were trying to cover it, but it was a different mm -hmm. way of not wanting mm -hmm. to speak up. So there were people with stories and they wanted to speak up. But for me, beyond the speaking up, is just closure. How do you yes. put closure when someone does not say sorry for what they did to you? You've got to find closure. We somehow. have two minutes. Ah, okay. We have two minutes, two so, minutes, two minutes. Comfort I need you to say something to people who have been abused. To people who have suffered to one form of abuse or the other, have you have to those yeah. who have been hurt. First of all, I want to say to you, sorry, sorry. You are you are valid. The way you think, the pain you feel is valid. Is valid. The women that have been cheated on too by their husbands, their children. Look, you are maybe thirty. You are abused when you are fifteen. The pain is there. You say you've forgotten. But the pain is there. Sorry. Sorry. I can't, I don't, what can we even say? Only God can heal you when someone doesn't even come to say sorry and genuinely go on their knees and beg for your forgiveness. Sorry. 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 I pray you heal. I pray you turn your pain to power. <laughs> I pray you bring, you also are able to bring succor to those who are hurting you know, and um, I pray that your anger will subside. And I pray that your life still turns out to be beautiful. Because he said in Isaiah 61, to give beauty for ashes. For ashes. The oil, oil of, of gladness for mourning. You've mourned hey. your childhood. You've mourned that incident. Yes. You've mourned it. It's a yes. real mourning. Like someone died. Okay? Yes. Something in you died. But let him give you the oil of joy. Turn your pain to power. Go and be amazing. Go and speak. Speak your truth. Go on TED Talks. Go, go write a book. Write about it. It will be a we bestseller. Have 40 seconds to go. And when I'm just your, going to say a, a big thank you. That pain, when you see what came out of that pain, you will be so happy. Chioma. Thank you so much. I have to speak to you again. Thank you so we much. We have to talk again. For being, because maybe yes, I will thank you for being pastor, so real. As a pastor's <laughs> Thank you so much, Ma, for being so real. Thank you for speaking truth. Thank, thank you for, for being so me. powerful with this conversation. Really, really, really great to have you. Thank you to everyone who joined. The conversation continues. Follow Enough is Enough Nigeria on all social media. Stay in touch with the State of Emergency GBB movement. 
find out how you can engage your legislators to, in, to put in place protections for women and girls. Have a good night, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Wear your masks, sanitize, and all of that good stuff. Good night, Ma. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a good night. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye.